So this is the fellowship of the link call for Mon uh, sorry, Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. And we were just, I was, um, Valencian was just saying that uh, one of the things that we might be able to do that would be really productive would be to write a book about the commons and how we think about the commons and how to bring one about. And I'm like, yeah, we started talking about our Monday calls, right? And so I just shared with him in the chat the yes. Mattermost link to the Marley calls, uh, which are Mondays at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. You are completely welcome to join. And I would be very happy to join you in like figuring out what a book on that topic looks like. So that would be great. You could count me in as part of your, your writing team. That, that would seem amazing to me. I mean, yes, uh, I, I started with the idea of a, just a document, a Google, a, a, okay, a document, a Google Doc, I will say, but, but yes, a book would be like a, an, an amazing longer term. Uh, and so, yeah. so I should explain that um, it started out as let's write a book, and then we sort of folded onto it other ideas about uh, how the book is kind of the attractive, well-known social artifact but really what's interesting is shared knowledge under the hood in a wiki or a series of wikis or other sorts of tools uh, so that what is written is actually more useful and connected to resources and to communities that are talking about the issues and everything else that we can think of. So uh, that is at least as important to us as producing a book, but our, but our goal is to churn out something that looks like an ebook or uh, an EPUB book or a Kindle file format book ASAP so that we have a, a finished thing that we can uh, that we can point to and go see we did that amazing yes um, right along with that um, <laughs> um, uh, fancy and as you're thinking of doing that I would like to pitch you on an organization structure um, mm. Uh, I have to let you know that I pitched the um, Marley project on this organization structure, and, and uh, they kind of like nixed it. They were like, "Yeah, too we complicated." Didn't nix okay. it. We said we said sort of maybe too soon, uh, but too, or too soon. But it was, it was, we had a bumpy call on Monday. Is it like a hierarchical commons first uh, anarchic organization? What's that? Is your organization proposal okay? You can pitch it, but is it like a hierarchical and commons commons first? Um, I think it's actually even better than commons first. Okay, let's um, go. Because uh, by the way, I have to say, like, I, I may need to go away for two minutes uh, because the ring, uh, the available ring. He has a friend know. arriving. Yes. Awesome. Um, I don't, I don't know if right now is the, the right time to pitch it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I totally could, but I don't know if share, share the share the link share the links in the chat so that Flansen can go read what you what you put yeah, out. Yeah, or just add into the notes. Because, yes, because because Pete did a bunch of work over the weekend, basically fleshing out a model for how every project might need to be its own little organization, and here are sort of the framings and ground rules for how each of the organizations might uh, structure itself. Pete, correct me if I'm. Stating it no, that's, that's perfectly right. Yes, that's um, great. And and then even to the extent that, um, uh, so I think we'll we'll see what Marley decides to do as a project. Um, it's got its own organizational structure, and and Jerry's right. It, it may just have been a little bit too soon to to talk about um, about the structure with Marley. Um, but in my the, the way I would set up the way Marley works is Marley would be a project with an organizational structure. And then each book that Marley produced is probably going to be another organization. So a fractal approach. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. Um, there's also a hol holonic approach. I, I actually don't know what that means, but. And, and I, I, I was thinking toward the end of our call Monday that maybe what you're doing is reinventing holacracy or something like that, because yeah. there's definitely this idea of circles. Oh, there we go. Um, hey, Aram. Um, there's definitely this idea of, of circles and responsibilities and how these circles communicate and what their responsibilities are, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trained in holacracy, but it felt sort of similar. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, solving the same problem in, in probably a similar way. Um, I think there's a holonic is a, another thing. You know. There should be a high holonic. <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, so I, I would I would love to give the pitch. I don't know if it's on topic for this group. Um, is kind of my hesitation. I think, along with not wanting What's... to drag Jerry through it again, but uh, Jerry's Jerry's fine with that. Yeah. What is the pitch? Um, organizational structure uh, for uh, small projects. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I is this like the Metagov folks? Uh I I yeah, except that it's probably smaller and and rougher and more like agile or something. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, uh Metagov uh Metagov uh Holacracy, yeah, yada yada yada. Um so uh so how about if I pitch it? Um uh sure. And it's something that I wrote down for a, a project that I want to start. Um, it it includes um, some a lot of discussion actually with uh, Jordan Sukut of Lionsburg and David Bovel of um, uh, Map of the Future. So they're both working on on templates for organizations um, in large ecosystems, cooperating organizations in large large ecosystems, um, and they actually have more more kinds of organizations and they also um they also have the idea of connecting it to legal structure like uh, llc's or corporations or um, partnerships or co-ops or all that kind of stuff and and in different places around the world they've got a better sense than i do of which organizational or which legal structure maps so I kind of I kind of start at how people are working together, and then they pick up on how you map that into legal space, including uh, uh, Lionsburg has um, has a way to connect uh, lots of things that are nonprofits that aren't legally nonprofits into uh, into legal nonprofits. I'm gonna wait for Flancy. He's just getting the door and then he'll be back on the call or he's, you know. Yeah, I think he's letting a friend in. Um, it's funny, and I thought that the keyboard sound was coming from Flancian. So then when he muted and left and the keyboard sound kept going, I'm like, oh, oh no, wait a minute. Really... Um, what's, you mentioned map for the future, but I don't know that one. Um, it's, uh... I think that's the right link. Yes, uh, they oh, they have uh, they have very little documented. Um, they have a lot of work. Um, David's got himself has got a lot of work, and then um, in connection with Map of the the uh, one of the sponsors of or well maybe sponsor of, of Map of the Future is Modi, uh, organization called Modi M O T I. Um, so they've got a lot of work that you don't see on that website, but I think that's the best website they've got so far. There is actually also a, uh, they have a massive wiki, um, but I think it's even more bare than, than the website or about the same amount of bare. Hmm. Uh, this, this is so, Paulville? Uh, yeah. Uh, and then there's also uh, Lionsburg. Lionsburg has a lot of this written down, um, but it's there's there's a lot to go through. I'm still waiting for Flansian, unless I should just go and, and repeat the stuff for Flansian. Yeah, we could wait a little bit. Uh, I'm looking up some of the other ones. Um. Right, interesting. So um, is Lionsburg, out of curiosity while we're waiting, is Lionsburg like a group, a product? What is it? Uh, it's... Um, uh, it's the... It's it's kind of both the ecosystem and the organization that drives, you know, or that's specifying the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is is pretty much empty right now. Um, it's it's gone through a couple reboots, kind of, and we're right in the middle of another reboot. Uh, so literally, like last week and this week, we're talking about the first four or five uh, organizations starting up in an ecosystem. Um, and I can I can probably add a little bit of color while Flancian is man managing his friend. Um, 
Lionsburg was started by Jordan Sukud, whom Pete mentioned, who used to be in construction and had kind of a crisis of conscience some years ago and sa saying, do I want to keep like flattening land for, for more buildings to go up or do I want to do something else? Did a whole bunch of research and ended up deciding that um, the, the most stable organizational structure to build lots of different ventures atop that would mine the commons and be hard to take over and all that is something called, um, uh, well, what's it called again? Steward ownership. And steward owner, the TLDR of steward ownership is that there's a nonprofit that owns 100% of the shares of a for profit. And that that combination has a whole bunch of case laws that, that's well understood in the world. And that also, um, so it's, these things are easy to set up and that in combination, you could then run a whole bunch of different kinds of entities on top of that platform. That was the basic starting point for Lionsburg, but there's also a whole bunch of other kind of philosophy about things folded into it. And uh, uh, Jordan is nothing if not a big picture thinker. Uh, so there's a, a whole bunch of other things. And Pete can point to, if you want to read uh, about the philosophy and everything else, you can go to a wiki that Jordan's been using where he's been putting a lot of this stuff down. Uh, and in fact, right. uh, Pete already put a link to the wiki in the chat. Okay, I missed the pitch, but that sounded very, very promising. No, we, we totally, we totally I was waited. Fill, I was filling time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Okay, okay, but that's a uh, that's even a better introduction. <laughs> um, let me uh, let me do the pitch real quick. Um, oh, Michael Rosman here. What's up? Michael, so Michael Grossman, uh, and, and Michael, we're hearing we're hearing some sound coming from your mic, Mike. Michael. Oh yeah. You have a tab that's playing or something like that. Yeah, I know you. There we go. Um, so it's funny calling even calling this a pitch and making a big deal out of it is is kind of overweight. Um, uh, so this is. This is something knowing that David is working on stuff and knowing that Jordan is working on stuff and, and has more templates and things. What I did is I, I wrote down kind of the simplest thing that could work. So um, let me, uh, it's it's kind of all in the wiki. There's, there's it's an interlocked um, set of pages that um, you kind of need to read all of them to get any of them. So the, I don't know that there's a good overview of everything, but uh, the idea is, let me go back home and see if that's a good place to start. Um, the idea is uh, it would be really cool to have um, a news. I, I already published a newsletter that's a news a news newsletter. Um, I thought it would be really cool to have kind of an art art newsletter instead. So it's little stories and uh, images that go with it. And the the kicker, the thing that makes this a weirdo project uh, is that it's totally fine if the little things are, are generated by AI. They need to be curated by a human. So a human needs to like think about what they're submitting to the journal, but um, it's okay if they're AI generated. Um, this is attractive to some people and anti-attractive to some people. So I don't know how well this, this project is going to go, but I'm pretty pretty excited about the organizational structure and it can map pretty quickly over to something like writing a book. So, um, so the idea is that there's uh, an art journal. Uh, this is one issue. This is a very small issue. It's got two and a half stories, kind of, and 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 stuff. Um, and a place down here at the bottom that says uh, answer a questionnaire. Um, uh, would would you would you should I keep going on this or not? Is the question of the. I, I so, am interested in the concept of the org structure a, a little bit more than I am the AI art. Side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. that's the only time we'll go back to the AI art thing. Um, so now <laughs> forget that. Forget that. So, so uh, what I'm presenting is the org structure. Um. Uh, so there's uh, people um, in project roles, um, and I'll start. This is kind of reverse chronological or something. Um, I'll start. Well, actually, maybe I won't. Um, in the steady state, uh, there's contributors and subscribers uh, and editors and stewards. So stewards are the governance committee. Um, uh, editors are an editorial committee. Stewardship committee makes decisions about, you know, what, you know, should we change our domain name? Uh, should we do marketing? 
uh, should we fold the tent and go home and, and not do this anymore, whatever, right? Uh, so those are stewardship kinds of decisions. The editorial committee, um, probably if I click on this, uh, editorial committee uh, sets contribution standards um, and and maybe makes a publication calendar. You know, when do we publish special issues and things like that? Contribution standards are kind of what you would expect. You know, here's here's how much text, here's how much image, um, here's the quality of them. Um, and I, I don't know if it quite says this here, but we're not going to publish it. Editorial committees the yay or nay on whether or not this story goes into into the next issue of the journal or which issue it does. Um, so uh, so then contributors are the people make the phrase a story in this uh, space uh, includes both the image and and uh, the text. Um, Subscribers are the people who um, provide or, or who make who pay for the journal. Um, the way my existing journal works, uh, you you can be a subscriber and you can pay zero dollars, or you can you can pay like a um, dollar, two dollars a month, or or two dollars a month, or twenty dollars a year. So this this kind of works the same. A subscriber might be paying; they might be not paying. Um, uh, I chose to say that subscribers don't participate in governance. Um, uh, contributors do um, participate in governance as well as editors and stewards. And then the, um, I think it's maybe in here. Um, actually, it's in stories. Um, so I did a weird thing. I said stories are are what we what we build, uh, what contributors build. Um, I'm also going to call the in-game currency stories. Um, so uh, when you're working on the stewardship committee or the editorial committee, you actually track hours and then you convert them to stories, um, uh, story domination currency, uh, at the rate of two stories per hour. Um, because the stories are really small and they're quick to produce with AI and stuff like that, you should be able to knock them out pretty quick. So if you're spending an hour in an editorial meeting, that's worth two stories. Um, so then, um, uh, I think I like the idea of the uh, linking the time uh, investment to. Uh, something that uh, reminds people of the primary output of the project. A, yeah, I, yeah. Thanks for appreciating that. And the other thing that I ended up realizing is, as I described it to other people, one of the comments Jerry made a great comment, which is, "Okay, Pete. So it's super confusing that the in-game currency is called a story, and your your thing is called a story. I, it's it's a good and bad thing, right? It it leads to confusion, mm -hmm. but it also says, hey, all we care about is stories. You know, we're in the process in the in the business of making stories." Um, uh, there's a ledger, central central ledger um, in Airtable. Uh, if if this wasn't uh, if this wasn't a project amongst friends, if it was people who didn't know each other as well, you might put that on blockchain or something like that. Um, it's this is more or less a nonprofit thing, generally cash neutral. Um, uh, there are there are expenses. Uh, the primary expense is a server to run Ghost on. Um, uh, there might be other things like a domain name or something like that. Uh, I was hoping the way I wanted to set this up is, you know, subscribers pay some money. Some some, some subscribers pay some money. Um, we pay for expenses. We keep a little bit for a rainy day fund, um, and then uh, we donate some, uh, and then we probably actually also pay. Jordan calls this a tithe. Um, that's maybe not the right word to use, but um, uh, in the Lionsburg network, you get uh, benefits from being a member of the network, uh, including things like you would typically get from a, a, a PEO. Um, you can get um, you, you get the option to be a nonprofit and a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, they handle like routing the funds to you. 
um, uh, if it's a if you're for profit thing and you actually have employees, they'll handle HR and um, benefits and stuff like that. So, so as a Lionsburg nonprofit, um, there would be I think a voluntary but kind of assumed donation of some kind. Donation is maybe the wrong word. Payment is probably better. Um, uh, it, it contributes to ecosystem health um, and pays for you know services and things like that. I think you know 10% is probably like if you if you're getting them to take care of health insurance and HR and that's probably actually an additional charge on top of kind of a network you know network benefit fee. So then finally, if there's remaining profit, it gets paid to contributors. The people are actually working. So um, I, I actually like that a lot. Um, I think I went through most of it. You can kind of, I, I didn't hit all the pages and this isn't completely well organized for presenting like this, but you get the idea. Um, Thank you. Uh, I, I can real quickly, uh, David, when actually maybe an important part to hit is um, the proportional share is of profit sharing and governance. So if you're contributing stories or hours that get contributed, converted to stories, um, you get um, proportional votes in, proportional shares in profit sharing and proportional votes in governance. Um, and that's over time in the same way that slicing pie works or dynamic equity splits. So you keep track of everything that's ever been contributed to the project and you know, if if the project has a hundred stories contributed so far, a thousand stories maybe is a better thing. Uh, if you've if uh, people have put to put in a thousand stories and I add five stories, then I get five times a thousand of of the profit. The next time profit gets distributed, I've got a five out of one thousand vote in governance. Um, so. Uh, in the in the project roles, I have a role called founder. I'm the founder, uh, and I award myself some certain founding things, like you know, writing all this down. Um, I I paid myself six stories or something like that. There's there's kind of another thing which I said I I called it a founder contribution bonus. There's there's kind of an intangible set of things that a founder does, like telling people about this or listening to it or thinking about how the how this is all going to work or something like that. So I, I kind of wrapped that up and said it's a founder bonus. So, so and it's big right now. It's you know the I own 20, 20 shares or something like that, 20, 20 stories. Um, so the next person who puts in one story, you know, I've got still a lot of say. But as soon as we've got twenty people who put in stories, or or one, two people who put in ten stories each, you know, now I'm down to fifty percent. And by the time there's a thousand stories. The founder part of it is very small. So those shares aren't equity. Um, they're of governance and of profit, but they're not of equity. So for this project, um, it owns itself and nobody owns the equity except the project. So that works for nonprofits. Um, and that's actually like that will connect up with the way that Lionsburg needs to specify nonprofits legally. And uh, the lawyer that they work with, the, the lawyer who's a, a core founder actually of Lionsburg, um, what he says, says is if that's fine for a nonprofit to own its own all of its assets and, and own itself, um, if it uh, if it ever needs to get dissolved or something like that, um, it needs to the whatever assets are there need to be given to another nonprofit that has the same kind of a uh, nonprofit charter, uh, you know, uh, a compatible charter, um, or it needs to go to the state. Um, uh, so it's so you can't set up a nonprofit, you know, contribute a bunch of stuff, and then somebody walks away with all the assets at some point. Um, it has to continue to be nonprofit forever, which is fine for this. Um, I think a for-profit thing, I'm, I'm working on a similar model for a for-profit co-op of um, people doing consulting. Um, and I think, I think somebody is going to end up owning, you know, there's, I, I think the founders are going to end up owning equity, which uh, kind of makes me nervous and stuff. So David Boval, uh, his model is um, uh, slicing pie, dynamic equity splits of equity. I think he uses equity. Maybe he doesn't. I, he's, 
he's I, now that I think about it, I don't think he calls it equity. I think he's got fake equity. He calls it fucked up equity, actually. Um, uh, fucked up shares. Um, so maybe it's not real equity the way that you know a legal thing would work. Um, his, I've, I've got a similar thing in mind. His organizations have a fiat balance uh, internally, a potentially a crypto balance if people are interested in crypto, um, a mutual credit balance. So um, uh, as you do work for a company, you might you might be your different roles. Uh, if you're a graphic designer and you're just coming in to like help out with the website and then you leave, maybe you don't want governance shares and maybe you don't want profit shares. Maybe you actually mostly want fiat um, and and or mutual credit. They might the the company the project might say we don't have a lot of fiat. How about if we pay you like like a tenth of your normal rate in fiat because you know everybody's got to eat a little bit or buy buy espressos or whatever. Um, but how about if we pay the rest of you, rest of it in uh, mutual credit? Um, and then the web designer might accumulate enough mutual credit with that project or a several projects to say, hey, I need a, I need a coder. Um, can I spend some of my mutual credit and get, you know, to help me build this web app I'm developing? I'll do the design, but I need to pay a coder. And then can I pay you mostly in mutual credit? Um, so I'm super excited about Lionsburg and and um, and Map of the Future, and a little bit frustrated because they don't have any of this written down in a way that made it made it made it make sense to me. So I wrote down my little model here is where this came from. Um, SJ, you stepped into Pete explaining an idea that came to him over the weekend that he crafted up and put on uh, his wiki. Uh, for a structure that organizations could adopt, and the idea being that almost every project is its own organization. Um, and he's kind of uh, designing this in parallel with uh, Jordan Sukut's Lionsburg organization and David Belleville's multiple projects trying to do this kind of thing. It's a little bit sort of parallel to maybe holacracy or other forms of organization, but it also has an aspect of trying to manage distributed value creation and sharing and recognition, which is an important question, I think, in our sphere. And I'm just wondering if anybody has questions for Peter or comments or, or whatever from what he's just said. It's also a little bit parallel to DAOs. Um, and mm -hmm. David will actually call these DAOs questions? sometimes. But um, DAO has this implication of uh, mechanistic, um, you know, rule-based uh, distributions of, of stuff. Yes, holacracy. So, and also DAOs imply, I think, blockchain. Yeah, probably. Um, well, they certainly imply it. I don't know if every DAO necessarily is on blockchain. Right. I mean, the, the conceit's something a little more broad than that. But I think generally in practice, if you say DAO, people expect it's on the blockchain. Right. <laughs> Also, like the disco as, as attracted as you know, like sort of like a law beyond that particular like infrastructure. Yep. Uh, and with a cooperative, you know, yep. like focus. Yes. I mean, I, I guess I, I can start like I, I thought it was very interesting. Thank you, Peter. I I guess just off the top of my head, I liked the idea of framing the uh, cooperation on the project sort of like as a as part of as a narrative, right? Like it's self-documented to some extent. The project contains documentation for governance. I understand being like a wiki or a repository that self-describes, uh, at least as a bootstrap, uh, you know, mechanism yeah. for uh, coordination. Sounds precisely like uh, I, I think that's spot on, essentially, um, and you know, it's extensible and so on. Uh, so that was uh, very nice. Um, I mean the. Uh, I think I'll, so. I'm on the fence around the, uh, the focus on governance and roles. I guess my first question, and this is just like a basic question, but like uh, I mean, five roles, or I guess you have six roles. They seem. I mean, I guess my first question is why six, or you know, it, maybe it seems like a bit, maybe uh, too many, just because I haven't thought through about like the whole of the governance implications. But like you know, I guess uh, uh, for like a minimum bootstrapping. Of coordination, I guess my my my, my personal personal traditional approach is no roles, mm -hmm. or maybe like two, right? Or, or like in the sense of like just let the community define the roles, or like uh, have it like more more like a more liquid definition of roles. But of course, like I guess uh, this 
can complement the, this other approach because like the same person could have many roles. So uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a good observation and and more or less um, a, a good chunk of the reaction of from the Marley the Marley team. Um, I. I, I'll continue to think about it. The um, the the definition of the roles is the so so one thing is that the uh, a a modality maybe I'll, I'll pick on OGM a little bit. A modality that we have in OGM is we do that uh, liquid roles thing. We do it super super well. We do it so well that nobody is ever in charge, and so project management never happens. Um, or Project management happens, but the the but it's because somebody's pushy or bossy enough to just make it happen, um, or I think this happens with me sometimes. Somebody starts doing project management, and they're doing a fair amount of work of project management that does not get recognized, and nobody cares about it. And it's you know, um, so um, I I think the the part of the definition of the roles is defining what they do. Um, and that's like the, the classic role thing. Really, the important part of this is what, who's, who's in charge? Is there somebody, you know, is there, is there, is there leadership? Is there governance? Um, and for leadership and governance, all I'm talking about is let's help the team uh, recognize that, that let's, Let's make sure we know all the decisions that need to be made and articulate them rather than letting them sit around and not get art articulated. So let's articulate decisions and let's have a process for making decisions. Um, so the so in the in the benevolent dictator uh, model, um, op kind of a classic open source model. So Linus Torvalds or uh, Guido or Jimmy Wales. Um, I, the way I think of them is they're they're farming these questions out of a good leader will farm questions out of the organization, right? So I, I so you guys are stuck. Why are you stuck? You know, oh, we needed to choose the framework. Um, oh, you know, she wants to use Rust and I want to use Go. Oh, you know, um, and and a lot of times the organization won't realize why they're stuck, right? They'll they'll actually express that as something else. We keep talking about frameworks, and I love my framework. And you know, I don't. I'm not sure it doesn't rise to the level of of a decision. So, a good leader, leadership, you know, governance. A, a lot of it is let's flesh out. Let's um, let me let let's find all the decisions and put them in a queue, and then have a mm -hmm. you know, the benevolent dictator mode is I'm going to delegate the decision. You know, Jimmy Wales doesn't need to decide whether or not that we're going to use Markdown or MediaWiki syntax because there's experts who know the pros and cons of that, right? Um, but he does need to make sure that, you know, okay, I, let me go back to the go and rest thing. Okay, guys, we actually have to do decide this, you know, and I'm going to make sure it gets made and, you know, um, and we'll convene a committee, we'll pick a subject matter expert who's just going to make the call. You know, I'll make the call, even though I don't know anything about it because nobody else would make the call, whatever. So um, that governance thing is super important. Leadership thing is super important. The other thing that the role definition does and the fine grain role definition, six instead of zero or one, um, it, it starts to value the contributions differently. Different you know? dimensions, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really important. And I think that's why I've got six all of a sudden right up front. Uh, it's because, you know, you want you want to be clear. Like, I, and, and I think the failure mode that I observe is that somebody joins a project and they don't know how they're contributing, right? It's like, and maybe maybe for a book or for a journal, you know, I think I want to do this editor thing. I don't want to write stories. I don't want to de make decisions. I don't want to make sure decisions get made. I don't want to do project management. What am I doing? So, you know, actually having specific things that the project needs to do, and then specific ways those contributions are are recognized, I think helps people plug into a project instead of it. It a way I said it on the Marley call was it feels like. 
I, I love liquid roles and things like that. Um, the failure mode is you get a bunch of people having effort and it doesn't get anywhere. So it feels to me kind of like you want muscles and muscles contracting to, to do work, but you actually want to attach the muscles to a, a framework, a skeleton, so that they're actually pulling against something to make output, productive output, instead of just twitching. That's kind of the, the picture I have in my head. And so the liquid role thing, you can get people who join the thing. They don't know how they can contribute. Nobody recognizes any way they can contribute. You can't, there isn't a way in the project to say, you know, what do you want to do? How can you help? Let's let's structure that and let's attach it to a skeleton. And then, you know, you can actually do work instead of just kind of being around. Thanks um, for letting me around. A couple of things that'll put in the conversation. Um, um, they're sort of a little different from each other. The first one is this idea that Pete, I think that when you were describing this, that the roles are very local to the project, meaning the roles that you saw in the project that Pete shared are very much publishing roles about uh, what Marley is doing, which is writing books. If the project were of a different nature, there would probably have different kinds of roles defined appropriate to that project. Correct? Yes. Cool. Good um, answer. Second, second, second. So the roles are very flex and depend on who is doing what for that particular organization. Um, second thing is, I, just in reflecting back on OGM and some of our neighboring com communities, we had these information needs early on, like who the hell is here and what are they good at? And we we spun like crazy for a really long time on just building any kind of of information source and and. Uh, uh, Vincent Arena went and built a whole thing that he came out of uh, sort of college with uh, that is called Catalyst and has a couple other names to it. That was a directory, but it's also a directory of organizations and organizational meetings and a bunch of other stuff. But but just there was a general need to say who's here and what are we good at or what you know what, what can we do. Then there was a need of what are we doing and how are we doing it and why, which is like task management, Kanban, something else. I don't know, and we never adopted whether it's Trello or Asana or some other thing uh, to, to sort of go into that. We've always had like, uh, there's, there's this question about how to, how to do these things. Then there's a question about platform choice. Um, then, um, then part of what happens is we want to get things done, but any of these systems present, prevent, present overhead for the group to use them. And if you're going to be accounting for time, you've got to do something to account for the time and then have a place to put it and some way to add it up and some way to, to source it. Um, and there's a bunch of communities, and I put the link uh, in the chat earlier for the Thought in My Brain Distributed Accounting of Value Flows, which is a really important question. And there's Comakery, Coordinate, uh, Disco.coop, uh, which Flancian mentioned, uh, Sensorica, and then there's one called Open Collective that we're pretty close to, and there's another one called Social.coop that we're also pretty close to because these are being built by friends. Every yes, I, I wanted to bring that up, Social Coop, as an example of no roles, everybody practicing governance, and how that works. I will be happy to mention that later. And, and every one of these includes personal profiles and a bunch of other things that, that, are, that are layers of software that they've written that preclude the use of other platforms because once you sort of dived into one and made an architectural choice to be in that particular community, you're sort of down that down that highway and, and kind of uh, stuck with it, I think. Um, so so th there's a really important question here about should we try to reinvent this from simple working parts, which is sort of what Pete did over the weekend. It's like, hey, look, I can, I can sort of put these things on markdown pages and we can kind of share things and we might have to upgrade to Airtable to do the project management part, but we don't know, et cetera. But th that's kind of hard. And I'm really interested in anybody's favorable experiences with any platforms like this. And I'm aware that one of the things that created Holacracy was the software that they uh, created called Glass Frog. And people did not like Glass Frog. And Glass Frog was apparently, a, I, I have no direct experience of it, but it's apparently a shitty way to sort of do project management for a large group of people, even though a lot of the ideas of Holacracy are pretty cool and pretty interesting. So I think that unfortunately, our desire to feed the commons, to recognize value, to uh, have lightweight ways of, of working together that does all this stuff sort of around us is hobbled by freaking software issues like left, right, and center. And anybody who's got like strong opinions on this or really good experiences with this or a perspective on how this is going to play out, please jump in now. <laughs>
<laughs> With that, I'll stop my rant. Uh, SJ, what kind of script? And Lumio is a, like the Inspiral network and Lumio, yes. But Lumio is mostly kind of a polling interface, it seems to me. It seems to me Lumio took a very, very thin slice of what this could be. Yes, yes. I mean, and, and I could go on for a bit on the complaints about Lumio. It's just yeah. complaints in an endearing way. It works, it's there. But yes, uh, it has this uh, thing. And we keep reflect, reflecting as a community on whether what we actually want is something Fediverse based. So essentially like Mastodon in, its, in itself. And in that, on that note, I have to ask, have you heard of Bonfire? Have I heard of Bonfire? I think yeah. so. Yeah, so um, Bonfire is one of the most promising, um, like new players or something in this space. Yeah. It's essentially Fediverse, ActivityPal based uh, instance with, uh, as a, with, with this explicitly also a platform for coordination and cooperation. And it's uh, started by Mariel de Borniol, who is the founder of Social Coop, uh, but has moved on. Uh, yes, but I mean, I, I totally agree with the, I guess this is also what I, I tie back to like uh, Peter's speech, if I may, like why I like the idea of starting with the narrative of the roles over the specific platform. And I do believe that text is a universal platform in this sense. So, you know, like text in a repo, this is also why, the, I mean, the Agora is sort of like the same, it's like a repository which describes itself, right? And uh, and that seems like a very, uh, you know, for defining a commons and so on, or, or a really project, it seems like a whole, like as close uh, as possible to universal base as we can get. Uh, but yes, I mean, I think this, we go back to some extent to the idea of like, uh, to which extent we need to do the due diligence of like charting the, the space, mapping it, like we have been doing with the tools for thought space right uh, and to some extent i guess this is an uh, this could be um uh, uh, and, and i will shut up after mentioning the roles again uh you know i like the idea of like the roles explicitly recognizing different tasks different classes of tasks to make sure they are prioritized from the get-go i guess uh, 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 going back to the social co-op example to close out uh, uh, i guess i would personally maybe think that we can start and we uh, have fewer concerns from adopting parties, like you mentioned, uh, Peter. Uh, if we start with just the contributor role, and we say these are the ways you can contribute, because having that separate has a nice thing that you are, it forces you to define a task list, and it says like they are all up for grabs, right? Uh, and you can still define the you know perceived value of every the completed task and so on, uh, without maybe. Uh, like introducing this uh, this thing which may re uh, may remind some people of like a class uh, hierarchy or something. You know? Other slots? Are we are we barking up the wrong tree? Is this urgent but broken? All thoughts welcome. And has anybody had a good experience on any of these systems or others that were missing on the list? I, what is the, I, I'm, what, what I'm is the primary to, goal of the systems? The system is, uh, in, in some sense, helping a group of people get things done and recognizing contributions uh, in case at some point there's cash in the system and you need to distribute it, or in case you want to have credits on the works as they come out and, and have a ready list of, of who did what where or something like that. Uh, Pete, if you want to add reasons, please do. I, a, a big part of it is um, I see lots of projects that don't have enough I, I don't know if this metaphor makes sense for folks but it makes sense to me they don't have enough skeleton they don't have enough framework to pull against to to like let people contribute in different ways and so people don't contribute um so so the worst case is like um i i see this happening less so that's good but mm -hmm. but for you know decades the way it works is it has worked. It's getting better. If I teleport myself back five or 10 years, it's like, you know, I want to contribute time to this project. Um, there's no way to do any kind of um, participatory distribution of, you know, maybe profit or maybe um, governance or, or God forbid equity. So, so since 
since I want to work on this project, I, you can't pay me. There's no way to pay me because we don't have a commercial, you know, I, I, because I'm not an employee of you, you can't, there isn't a way to pay me. Um, so I'm happy to donate my time, but then everybody has to donate their time because I don't want to be the, the only one donating time and everybody else is getting paid or something like that. Right. This used to be a big conundrum five, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so you'd come together to do this, this project for good. Everybody would say, yep, I can donate 40 hours. The, the project would run. And then it's like, okay, can we do this longer? It's like, well, I've got a day job, you know, well, I could, I could do this longer if I was getting five bucks an hour, but since we can't figure out how to pay you five bucks an hour, the whole thing dries up and goes away. Right. So that's kind of an over dramatization of it, but that's the problem that I see a lot of projects have it's like you know the an, another failure mode that still happens it's like oh my god there's money involved money destroys everything let's not do that this is a horrible project because it's a for-profit and for-profit is has what this destroyed the world it's like yeah come on guys you know um if we you know if we're if we're writing a book or making a journal and you know we're getting a few dollars in you know, it adds up to, you know, maybe 50, 100, 200, a thousand dollars a month. And we distribute that, you know, to people who are contributing is I, you know, I get that. <laughs> I get that we've, we've like connected up to the fiat machine and, and fiat corrupts absolutely, but maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe if we build enough layers and stuff and that's what Lionsburg is working on, right? Uh, Lionsburg, when you hear the pitch from Jordan, you know, he's like, there's, he'll say there's billions of dollars that want to nonprofit dollars that want to go someplace. Um, there's thousands or tens of thousands of little organizations that want to do good. All of those tens of thousands of organizations cannot hit the bar of being a 501 C three to legally accept money from those, you know, so what do we do? You know, tell, you know, tell the money people no don't give us any money because we can't figure out how to take it and for the the people doing good you know it's like i'm sorry you you, you know uh if you were making a million dollars if you were doing you know if you needed a million dollars then we could set up the legal structures to do the blah 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 you know it's like you know that doesn't help anybody so lionsburg is has developed an inf interface layer where they can front the effort and the, the money to do the legal stuff and then they can also hook up to tiny little, you know, things as, as big as this, this uh, journal, you know, where it's three or four people working together. So. I guess the interesting thing about it is, right, I see this problem too, the idea that there are small projects that could use funding. I'm wondering, like, the setup that you have has assembled pieces uh, that I understand are mostly from Lionsburg, but is that, like, are all those pieces required? What, like you said that one of the things you no mentioned was like it had to go public or go to the nonprofit or go to the state. But I like, what what is a, the state in this case? Does the state mean Lionsburg? Like what exactly, like it, um, let's say we wanted to follow a model but not necessarily have the same structure you do. Is that possible? Is yeah, pieces? definitely, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, it, what I mean by state, by the way, it, it's uh, uh, I'm, because I'm sitting in the U.S., what I mean is the U.S. state. Um, uh, uh, corporations are regulated, corporations and nonprofits and things like that are regulated in the U.S. by the states, individual states, California, New, New Hampshire, Delaware, Wyoming. So, uh, so in the event that your nonprofit, you know, you've, you've got a nonprofit charter from, from California, in the event that your nonprofit goes bad, <laughs> California doesn't want to see the thousand dollars of value or ten thousand dollars of value or a million dollars worth of value go to somebody's pocket. It needs to go to another nonprofit, the similar, or it goes to California. California will end up owning it. Um, okay, a, that's a sheet is the uh, technical term, which I always sound, think sounds weird, but that's very interesting. So, like, what does California just own a whole bunch of? non-profit organizations that just sit like in perpetuity it's, it's a that's a failure mode the, the 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 um the success mode is it gets assigned to another nonprofit. i think it's very very real you know that's the that's the fallback mechanism um i don't know how much it it happens um the 
so another way that we've been getting around this is like uh, uh, open source projects don't own, they don't have assets really kind of, they don't have assets because they've donated everything to the public already, public good already, right? All of their, all the code is copyright, you know, MIT license um, or whatever. So they don't end up with this chunk of, of assets that has to be distributed some way. Um, there's still a problem of who owns the copyright. So that's a tricky bit. And that's why you have things like Linux Foundation or Mozilla Foundation or something like that, because then, you know, you don't have to worry that a bad guy has owned owning it or a, a dead person is owning it or whatever. I, I like the fact that you're using it to leverage things and kind of lift things up off the ground. And it's particularly useful in cases of diversity where marginalized people who can't afford to become involved never will because they don't have, they need some income to do that. Um, the one thing I would worry about is on the polar opposite side of runaway success, someone sooner or later is going to figure out what your payment model is and game it. And then you're stuck with problems with like Gresham's law, where you have the bad money driving out the good. Someone will figure out how to game your system, take over control of the thing and vote it away to themselves. And I, you know, the one, this has been happening a lot in, in actual capitalism where robber barons are going in and buying up newspapers, selling off all the assets, pocketing the money, or in the case of like Sears, the CEO comes in, creates a real estate trust, puts all the real estate in it, which he owns and controls. And then Sears itself as a company goes bankrupt while he's left with the real estate assets, which is, you know, so screwy things like that are happening. And in extreme success, you may have to worry about those. And I don't know what those look like because right now you're just looking to get the thing off the ground, yep. but off in the future, you ha you'll have to worry about those things. Yeah. Great observation. Um, just good in, examples, Chris. Just in the wishful thinking vein, it would be lovely to have a platform that was modular the way Unix is modular. And I don't know if that means Fediverse or Indieverse or whatever. Uh, or indie web or whatever, but something modular so that you could sort of click, click click and place different things that you wanted to use. It would be lovely if um, you could sort of pick from menu items and say, oh, 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 I've got a new project. Okay, this project is going to be under the Generative Commons Agreement. I'm going to want the Benevolent Dictatorship role model. Uh, I'm going to want to uh, enable uh, paying people for their time if if they sign up to do that uh, and other people may just join the project because they love it and just want to be there you know at the periphery and they, they have a choice coming in and the interface will sort of just uh, fold that in a, as you wish and then a couple other layers of, of what this might be with 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 some IP terminology and other kinds of things kind of taken for granted but available in depth by reference like oh here's what this body of agreement kind of means in terms of the, the specifics as you went through it. And that would be lovely because then anytime you spun something up, the effort involved in making those choices and making them explicit and offering them up to people would be really pretty low. It'd be a, it'd be a tiny lift. Uh, and if your actions during the day made it really simple to say, these hours go here, these hours go there, then the allocation of your participation in all, across multiple projects would be simple to trace, et cetera, et cetera, without then going to a timekeeping platform and trying to bridge it over to some other platform and trying to, it's like the moment you're, once you pick three tools, uh, you're kind of baked for whatever else and you, you've locked in whatever features and value you might get for a long time. And if like Lumio, they don't just richly add stuff and make it better over time, you're going to get bored of doing like pie chart polls over and over again. It's not going to actually function as a civic democracy platform, which it could have, should have, might have wanted to have been. Yes, which I guess it ends up being, in my mind, another appeal for the commons and the federation or the favors. So precisely, you know, like 
uh, Lumio is actually not part of it. Uh, and to some extent, that makes it so that even though it's open source, in practice, it uses the default Intel, so has a host one but having features, and people are not developing a lot for it. So, yeah, uh, I guess this to me says that uh, the minimum, the, the designated coordination platform should be either very basic and, and you know, like all, almost to the point of trivial, like, you know, what Peter started with, you know, I think, like, you know, like the repository with descriptions or like something that includes federation. So I love these ideas. And I think Jerry is right to point to this sort of lock-in, which is not necessary. And I think ta tackling it as though there should be a, a rationalized, complete, crisply defined system leads to getting stuck with a particular definition. Mm -hmm. uh, the most successful models and, and the other thing is people often tie governance and equity, like people often tie governance in terms of day-to-day -day decisions, governance in terms of absolute decisions, like should we uh, convert, you know, should we transfer this whole project to the local used car dealership and um, asset sharing or, you know, share in, some kind of conversion if the whole thing is, is converted to some other system. And those don't need to be those don't need to be the same. So you, you could you could you could define a social norm that says uh, here's here's day-to-day -day governance, here's some very small, more traditional group that deals with absolute governance. And here's the here's the current rule of thumb for any asset distribution. If it happens, those things um, those things will take strong hints from uh, from these other distributions, so that they're not they're not acting completely arbitrarily in figuring out how to uh, how to cross those streams. But you don't have to you don't have to bind them together either legally or through or through a system to make to to do a lot better than what you normally have, which is absolutely no uh, no coordination or clarity. And a version that, that I have really enjoyed is um, a system where everyone can self-assign roles and self-report the time that they're spending doing things, like whether they whether they actually did that for a given year. And you sort of have a large family of badges that are, you know, I did this thing for these three years and this thing for these two years. And it's not it's not going overboard and trying to specify how many hours were spent doing each thing. Of course, you can't do that if it's easy. If you make the, if you make some of these things easy, people can do it more granularly. And um, and for that to be weighed very uh, colloquially but seriously in a consensus making process where you're not making a vote anyway. So the process of yeah. And I don't know whether this is a successful model, but another way of doing this is periodically having everybody vote on everybody else's participation and the value they created, and then having some kind of algorithm to unify that. So that there's no time tracking, although you could use as evidence uh, files pushed to GitHub or hours spent in Zooms or whatever else you wanted. You could do some of that. But everybody could sort of say, well, like the most value for this project was created by these two people. And that could factor in alongside 